We're coming down from some fast solar wind that gave us a decent solar storm, and the sun gives us one more reminder why Solar Cycle 25 is nearly here. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see we've had a two-part coronal hole rotating in through the Earth strike zone this week, and it has bumped us up to storm levels with the fast solar wind it's been sending us. We've actually bumped up to storm levels twice, and we've gotten aurora as far south as Wyoming in the United States. So aurora photographers, you should be loving life. You've been getting a rare glimpse of aurora during this solar minimum sun, so definitely enjoy it. But believe it or not, that's not the biggest story. The biggest story is the new region that has emerged on the Earth-facing Sun. It's region 2744 and it's a solar cycle 25 sunspot. This means that solar cycle 25 is still coming. It's on its way despite whatever reports you've seen in the news lately. This poor region has emerged and then kind of submerged again and then emerged once again kind of like a submarine going up and down and it's stuck with us. It's hanging in there. It's not giving us much activity but it is is a hero of Solar Cycle 25, and we are definitely watching it closely as it continues to rotate on the Earth-facing disk. Now, as we switch to our partial backside sun, this is the view from stereo that's kind of looking at the sun from the side. You can see that region emerging on the west limb of stereo as it begins to rotate out of stereo's view. And there's actually a couple other regions that have been kind of emerging and disappearing again also at high latitudes. You can kind of see them on and off, but they're not really sunspots yet. Nonetheless, after the, all that excitement, you look at the rest of the disk of, from Stereo's view and there's not much going on. So once all this excitement dies down here on the Earth-facing disk, it looks like we'll have at least another 10 days to two weeks of very little activity. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase with the upcoming full moon being on the 16th. So you night sky watchers, you're going to have to compete with a bright moon, so you better check your local rise and set times. And now for a closer look at that new Solar Cycle 25 sunspot that's emerged on the Earth-facing disk. You can see when it emerges, it emerges very, very quickly. It even fires off a couple B-class flares as it emerges. And we actually had some really high hopes that it might start getting some decent activity. But it has not managed to do much more. It's kind of receded a little bit, yet it is still hanging in there. And you can see from all those blue-tipped uh, magnetic field lines that it is definitely at high latitudes in the southern hemisphere. And with the polarity it has, it definitely uh, belongs to Solar Cycle 25. So this is unambiguous for a Solar Cycle 25 sunspot. And as we take a closer look at the sun's magnetic field, we can actually use models to help us determine where the magnetic equation is, and this is very important to determine whether or not a sunspot is at high latitude or low latitude. Here you can see all these dashed lines. These are where the magnetic equator is according to the models at different altitudes in the sun's atmosphere. And you can see that sunspot, that new sunspot from cycle 25 is definitely far away from that equator. And that means it's high latitude. And that's just one more indicator that this is definitely a sunspot from solar cycle 25. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we are still dealing with that fast solar wind from the Corona hole that's rotated in through the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 45% chance of a major storm. Now, mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with about 30% chance of active conditions, and this should kind of calm down over the next couple days. But then we do have another smaller Corona hole that's going to rotate into the Earth strike zone, so things could pick up at the end of the weekend around Sunday and into Monday, and we could get another chance for aurora at high latitudes, but it's going to be a bit smaller. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have that new region from cycle 25 that is on the Earth-facing disk right now. And at one point, it was actually given a designation of region 2744. It has since lost that designation as it's kind of submerged under the surface. It's coming back a little bit, and we'll see how much it hangs in there. But that's why the region has, has got a parenthesis on it on this chart. Meanwhile, that tells you also that it's not really all that active, so everything is 
in the green when it comes to big solar flares. GPS users on Earth's day side, this should make you very happy. We have no risk for radio blackouts. Unfortunately, it also means it's not boosting the solar flux. We're still in the high 60s, and this means poor radio propagation on Earth's day side. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you're just going to have to hang in there. It's going to continue like this easily over the next week and possibly two weeks before we get any kind of reprieve at all. Now also, because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic gray flux is impinging a bit more than it normally would. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew, who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you guys are in the moderate range for radiation dose. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has definitely gotten interesting. We have a corona hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and it's been sending us fast enough solar wind to bring us some decent solar storm conditions. It's even brought aurora down to mid-latitudes for a short while. And this is going to continue over the next day or so, especially at high latitudes. You aurora photographers, you're still going to get a chance for some sporadic aurora before things begin to calm down. And then around Sunday into Monday, we should get hit by yet another little burst of fast solar wind. It won't be as much as we've just been getting, but it should still give us a chance for aurora at high latitudes. So enjoy this because this is going to be probably the busiest time for maybe the next two weeks or even more before you get another chance. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, we've got a little harbinger of solar cycle 25 that's on the earth-facing disk right now, so that should make you very happy. I know solar flux is so bad right now, and I've been getting a lot of complaints from people telling me that radio propagation on Earth's day side is just terrible. So hopefully this is a sign that solar cycle 25 is coming very soon. And we are watching this little region rotating uh, on the Earth facing disk and he's hanging in there. So this is a very good sign. But meanwhile, the solar flux does continue to be low for you guys. And that's just going to be the state of way things are over the next easily week, if not even two weeks before we get a little boost in solar flux from some other regions that will be rotating back into Earth view. Now, GPS users, you guys on the other hand should be very happy. The solar flux is low. You love that. Solar storm conditions are beginning to wane and it's not going to be too busy before too long. And that actually helps stabilize that upper atmosphere for you. So your GPS reception, as long as you stay away from Aurora and away from the Dawn Dust Terminators, your GPS reception should look pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.